Okay, okay, everybody, man. Uh, listen, uh, this is comedian Doug Williams, man. Uh, uh, this brother been laying it down, uh, I don't know, since like a 93, 94, something like that. Or have you done it longer than that? 90, I started in 90. Started 90, 90, okay. He is a Q, so they're going to forgive you for that. You know what I'm saying? There's a cap of... Uh, this is a Kappa thing, so you know. Are you are you are you a Kappa? <laughs> yeah, yeah, bro. I do a, yeah, my company is cstandup.com. We do an all Greek show. I actually okay. reached out to you one time, but you I don't think you were uh, able to get on it or or what have you. But you know, I I lay it down. It's all divine nine love, man. We all oh, yeah, 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 you know, yeah, we yeah. all in the same community. Yeah, of course, you know, but it's, it keeps a, it keeps us friendly and a good you know good energy. So I just wanted That's to make right. sure. That was on the table. I saw your purple hat with the hook. You know, oh, well, you the, know, I'm always uh, trying to thing on it. slide in it, there and try to represent, you know, here and there. I try, always try to represent. The beautiful thing, and I don't want to stray off course, that I love about these fraternities and sororities is that they came about during a time, man, yeah. when it was so hard for us just to be able to read a book. And these founders, the founders of your, uh, of Kappa's, founders of Omega's, founders yeah. of Alpha's, these guys were able to obtain doctorates yeah. during the time. So it's no excuse for today's generation. If they no, were able to all. go to school and get that higher education in 1911, exactly. when we were being lynched and held in, it's no excuse. So, I mean, that's what I love about all of the organizations. Absolutely. And that's how, what I love also, brother. So can you give me uh, and my people just a quick little brief synopsis of uh, some of your, uh, your you know, your uh, achievements there, bro. I, I could read them off, but it, it would be better coming from you. Well, you know, man, it's funny because a lot of times you don't realize what your achievements are while you're doing them or, 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 or when you look back, you don't think on them. But a lot of times people remind you of what you've accomplished. It's kind of like when an a athlete wins a championship. Yeah. You know, years later, people bring it up and you go, and that athlete goes, wow, man, it really, I didn't realize all the things I had done, the stats and everything. And then so, Somebody pointed, I said all that to say, somebody pointed this out to me during Black History Month, man. I'm the first, and this was pointed out to me because I never like to, you know, toot my own horn, but I'm the first African-American to ever produce a stand-up show, host that stand-up show, yeah. Yeah. and have it on a major uh, network like Stars, so that the Martin yeah. Lawrence Presents the First Amendment yeah. stand-up, uh, you know, that's my little etch in history, man. I produced it, I yeah. hosted it, uh, uh, I created it, yeah. So, uh, you know, all those go in the same uh, category. So that was Martin Lawrence presents the First Amendment stand up on stars, man. Um, yeah, man. You know. We we in Chicago absolutely loved that, man, because one of the uh, a, a few of our really good brothers that put their time in got to be on there. Mark Simmons, Marlon Mitchell, uh, cats like that. You know, you oh, can still man. Google talented guys, stuff. all those things. Yeah, talented man. Guys. I yeah, think yeah. I think Mark's. I think uh, Marlon Mitchell, man, is one of them. Dudes who's like top twenty in comedy, but because he's in this fishbowl that we call Chicago, the people outside don't get to see him. And you provided a platform where he could at least, you know, get touched a little bit. You know. Well, praise God, man. You know, another thing, you know, since you bring up Chicago, man, I can't uh, help but to think uh, about Bernie Mac, man. I want to just say yeah. that uh, Bernie Mac, and people can go to my YouTube YouTube channel and see the the scenes that I did with him. But I did like the last season of the Bernie Mac show. And at yeah. the time, I didn't know Bernie Mac. You know, I just went, I went and auditioned. Uh, I made it through, uh, and I worked with him. And to work with him, man, it was a week that we had uh, that we had an opportunity to work together. Yeah. So for for that week to come to know him, to hear about some of the the stories in Chicago and you know, because he really came from the ground up in Chicago. Oh, it was man. Just, yeah. It was, it was uh, you know, a legend outright, but just a Chicago legend, too. Oh, uh, it was just, it was beautiful. It was beautiful. Yeah. yeah, absolutely, man. You know, well, I had actually just started being a DJ around the time when Bernie Mac was starting his incline. And he used to do this room called the uh, Cotton Club, man. And it was a monster. It was not for the weak of heart. And he right. tamed it like a lion tamer tames a cat. You know what I mean? A little two-pound kitten. He was just that incredible. The other thing that I really want to, uh, I say this a lot, and they hate it in my uh, my uh, couple of rounds, is 
that the racism and the segregation in Evanston was something that Bernie Mac always dealt with because he was a phenomenal performer, but he never got to perform at Zanies because they they didn't believe in him. You know what I mean? He was just a little too black and stuff like that. And, and that's the wanna... beautiful. That's the beautiful. And I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, but that's no, the beautiful so thing about uh, his story, man. And that's the beautiful yeah. thing that I, I want people to take away from this is that there's so many avenues to get what you want. Right. And you can never let anyone deny you or make you feel you're unworthy because they don't allow you access to their avenue. Exactly. So, you know, Bernie, one of the great things about Bernie is that he made Hollywood come to him because essentially Bernie wasn't the prototype that yeah. Hollywood is looking for. And, 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 and I say that, you know, in, uh, with regards to Tyler Perry and all those guys. I mean, yeah. Tyler Perry was doing those little plays, man, that Hollywood would have laughed at. <laughs> but he was able to push it through because he believed in it. And you can believe in something so much that you can impose your will on other people and make them say, hey, man, you know what? And, and, and rappers do it all the time. This is acceptable now. You know yeah. what I mean? Whereas yeah. to, in, in, the, in the broad scheme of things, people might not look at it as acceptable. But if you believe in it and push it hard enough, you can make people accept it. And that's what Bernie Mac, Tyler Perry, and all those people were able to do. And, yeah. and I was able to do that with the First Amendment, man. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, that was uh, uh, looked at at the time when I was trying to push the First Amendment. Oh, man, that's Def Jam. It's been done before. It's just, you know, but I refuse to accept that. So, you know, I, I just, you, for your viewing audience, don't ever let anybody tell you what's acceptable. You make it acceptable. That's right. That's right. And I think one of the other things that you are peripherally touching on is that the artist does actually control the art. So if we if we continue to create, then, you know, the CEOs of these companies will have to either pay attention to us or they will disappear like a lot of places have, you know, YouTube, right. and things like that are erasing that big Hollywood hold over everything. Of know? course. So we, we look of course, and to I'm that. I'm I'm starting to get into that now. Yeah. So what do you what yes, are some sir. of the projects that you're working on now? Well, this thing is solidly connected to COVID. I'm trying to, you know, uh, deal with this. So prior to COVID, was there something that you were working on that you could share with us? You know, prior to well, that, actually, I'm, I'm you know I'm 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 always working on something. So, but you know, man, I I just want to say I was it's funny did you say that because I was talking to my wife. Uh, this morning about this whole COVID thing. And one thing, because I had a lot of gigs lined up. Yeah. And all of those gigs that. were canceled. And we didn't, um, you know, you have to anticipate being fired from a job or being laid off. Yeah. You know, so a lot of times we don't plan accordingly. You go to work, you go to work. But then all of a sudden, if it's not there anymore, you're like, man, what am I going to do? So I don't have any income coming in right now. Mm -hmm. So what I've been able to do as a result of this, I went and I was always hesitant about trying to blow up on social media. Not hesitant in the sense of, I didn't want it to happen, but hesitant in the sense of putting out the, the stuff that it takes to go viral. You know, making videos and doing all that stuff because I figured yeah. like, I'm a traditionalist. I'm gonna do my yeah, stand-up work. absolutely. But as, absolutely. A, as a result of this, man, I started making these videos and one has gone viral. I, I did this uh, piece about, you know, pay the teachers. It's called pay the, the MF teachers because you know, we're having a homeschool now and dealing yeah. with my son every day. And it showed me how underappreciated teachers were. So yeah. one day in a fit of just, you know, frustration, Rage. I just went out in the car and I made this rant. Yeah, I yeah. made this rant about y'all need to pay the teachers because we got to get these schools back open, man. I didn't realize what these teachers were dealing with. Because, you know, everybody thinks my child ain't that bad. <laughs> yeah, your right. child is that bad. Yeah, until you had uh, the COVID with them, huh? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So I made this uh, thing. You can go on my YouTube channel. It's called Pay the MF and Teachers. Yeah. And it went viral, man. It's on my <laughs> Facebook page, Doug Williams fan page. Yeah. And as a result of that, it's up to, uh, you know, close to 1.5 million views. But as a result of doing that, I'm, I'm really into the internet thing now and doing this yeah. whole thing. And things are taking off. So the COVID forced me to go down another avenue or an avenue that I wasn't necessarily anticipating on going down. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. It, 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 it's a sign that, you know, going back to what we were saying earlier, man, you know, don't let anybody confine you or don't let a situation dictate that you can't move forward because of the circumstances. Oh, and man. as a result, I'm moving forward because of this COVID. 
a bad situation, I've turned into a good situation. I've been here and I've been making use of the time. Yeah, I'll, absolutely, man. That's and kudos to that. Um, I was and, and the that. same thing with you. You you you're doing the same thing, like you said. This this thing has come about as as a result of COVID. But look, here you and I are now doing hey, this man. interview. You know what I'm right. saying? Right. Yeah, I would have never had a reason to reach out to you or anything right. like that prior to right. uh, this. So you know, in my you know my business has been it it hasn't been like as big as yours, but I've been surviving, and that's all comedy comedians have are looking for. We want to do what we love yeah, I'm doing and make enough money. Thing to survive the same thing brother i'm surviving yeah. i mean you know but, you and so, i are in the same same hustle exactly now one of the things that i've learned and that uh, about this new hustle uh culture that we're gonna do is man i would love to see you go to uh Udeme and and do a class and sell that class on there man especially on how to create and get your television show produced you know from the you know i'm working on that right like now you, with my man. Own Wife, uh, you know, my wife, we have a production company. We are uh, we're okay. sitting down uh, working on that. Uh, have a lot of things, but I want to encourage all of your viewers, man, to get my. Uh, you know, in in this business, what's old is new, and what's new is old, man. I did a a, a special mm. for uh, a comedy special some years back that didn't really get a lot of airplay or what have you. I mean, you know, social media wasn't around when I did it, so it just ran as, you know, the natural channels, which back then wasn't much. Right. But now, man, it's having a resurgence. So people are, are, are really digging. The, and I, I watched the other night. I'm like, man, this is, you know, some pretty good stuff. So uh, if you go to my uh, my fan page, Doug Williams fan page on Facebook, fan page, yeah. the regular page is full. Yeah. Doug Williams fan page, you can uh, order that special. And I'm, I'm only charging $5 for it. You know, some people get more or what have you. But it's $5. You do the cash app. And... Uh, or, or PayPal or Zelly and check it out, man. So I've been sitting here, man, the wheels have been turning, getting yeah. things out and getting things done. So is it stand up or is it, uh, you know, cause no, it's stand up. It's all stand up. It's, it's, it's pure stand up. Okay. Excellent. It's a pure man. special that I did that, uh, ran on BET and, uh, it, 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 it uh, it withstands the test of time in terms of, cause you know, I always try to do my comedy where it's not dated, where I'm just not doing something like it's a current event that yeah. years from now will be passed. You know, right. I do relationships, I talk about my life, and those type of things transcend past mm. whatever the current date is. Right. So uh, it's doing really well, man. Uh, you can go on, uh, like I said, my fan page, Doug Williams fan page, or Instagram, Mr. Douglas Williams, Mr. Douglas Williams, and you can uh, order it. It's just $5, and uh, it comes right to your phone, and you can watch it right on your phone. So yeah, it's, that's it's, awesome, uh, it's doing man. pretty well. So, so you're going to do your um, Facebook Live uh, show in the corner of your house, or you going to... Um, you know what, man? I, you know, this this came out... Me, me. It's funny how this works, uh, how life works, but I was talking to some other comics who were doing doing just that. You know, they're doing the comedy yeah. out of their, their homes, and they've been having great success. But I'm just not at the point... You know, not yet. I'm not, I said I won't be there. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> that's just foreign to me, man, standing up yeah. in the living room doing comedy. I'm not knocking yeah. it. I'm not knocking it. But, you know, yeah. we all have what works for us. So as a result of somebody telling me that, saying, hey, man, you should do that because, uh, you know, these companies are doing well with that. They put their, their cash app up or what yeah. have you. And uh, I admire it. It's, you yeah, know, people, yeah, they're man. giving people entertainment. Uh, but rather than do that, I just thought, you know, why don't I just, I, I've done a comedy special that, yeah. you know, like I said, didn't get the airplay that I feel, I feel now it deserved because we don't, we, we don't have, you know, all of the, the means of getting things out. We didn't have YouTube when I did it with yeah. anything. So I, um, I put it out. That's why I put out the stand-up comedy special, and it's, it's doing real well. That's awesome, brother. That's awesome. Now, looking at uh, one, some of your achievements that I'd like love to uh, inquire about, man, is you worked with Eddie Murphy directly. You know what I mean? On, uh, I think it was Nutty Professor. Is that right or no? I, you know, the Nutty Professor, yeah. Great working with Eddie, uh, two of the, the, the people whom I've worked with, uh, that, uh, and it's been a few. I shouldn't say two, but a few of the people that I've worked with that I looked up to that I really had a uh, opportunity to speak with, and they had, you know, they gave me some great advice. Eddie Murphy, we already said Bernie Mac, yeah. But uh, Eddie Murphy, man, um, a lot of people don't realize, man, this guy is a genius, man. This guy has a photographic memory. Damn. He, uh, when you see him doing those characters, man, he locks into those characters. I, you know, I really feel like Eddie Murphy uh, has been passed over. 
uh, in terms of an Oscar, man. Eddie Murphy should oh. have received an Oscar, man, because, you know, no disrespect to Jamie Foxx, another person who's really talented, plays, you know, music, sings or whatever. Yeah. But uh, all of these guys are really protégés of Eddie, man. I mean, oh, Eddie for sure, for sure. Things, you know, that means so uh, just a wealth of knowledge in talking to him, man. He sat down, he, he, he opened up to me about a lot of things, and uh, it was great working with him. Also, Dave Chappelle was on that movie. I did, we were talking about the first time. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Had a chance That's to right. break bread with him, so yeah. these were cats who uh, shouldn't say uh, that, but uh, guys that were influential uh, in my career in terms of advice and influence. Right. Well, at the time, you and Dave Chappelle, when that came out, y'all couldn't have been too much different in the, you know, in the politics and in the career level of ability at that time. So were y'all, or or am I wrong? Because man, like no, I he said, was uh, he was a lot further along than I was. At oh, he was. Day, but yeah, yeah. When he did that movie, he was sought after. A lot of people don't realize, man. A lot of people auditioned for that part that Dave had. Okay. Uh, Cedric Entertainer, uh, Joe Torre. Uh, all of those guys were, you know, seemingly just trying to break into Hollywood or, or, or just arriving on the scene. Yeah. And they were sought after for that part. They went right. after Dave Chappelle for that part. Okay. So, uh, you know, he was he was on the rise in Hollywood uh, yeah. when he did The Nutty Professor. And that was in 96. When we okay. Shot. We shot it in 95. It came out in 96. Right. Well, well, Hollywood is such an interesting uh, environment, too, man. So what you just opened up to me is something that I never really, well, I mean, I, I think I could have th threw it. So you're saying that uh, even though they have a line outside of all these semi to super famous dudes who are auditioning for this one part, there are guys out there that since the Hollywood people are looking for, you guys feel that they're on, on a higher rung than you. That is that the case out there in Hollywood, or is it different? Say that one more time. Hustling? Say that one more time because I kind of got lost in your words. You said, uh, I'm sorry, ask me the question one more time. Okay, is there a ranking in Hollywood on who's sought after or not when it comes to comedy? Because there are, uh, in an audition, I thought for sure that it was just who was best and who. The uh, you know, plus I guess you got to measure in who they want, who's gonna draw people. But if y'all, I, mean, I think I think it boils down to I think it boils down to that. Uh, you know the draw, you know all things even if it's just if they're just looking for someone to fill a part, yeah, and and they're looking on a level of unknowns, then it's just that. But okay. when they're looking, you know, Hollywood is about generating capital. And who people Everything. are going to pay to see. Yeah, it's just, you know, like going to a comedy club. So, you know, but they, but, but, but it's a season. Sometimes okay. they're looking for an unknown person or a relatively new person. And then right. sometimes they're looking for a big name, you know. But typically the big names are done when the movie is in development. When they're saying, okay, who can we get to play this part? What, what about this person? What about this person? Yeah. When they go out to the audition and they're actively audition then it has come down from the first tier to probably the second tier. And then they're looking, you know, maybe to give somebody a chance, but generally they have who they want in mind when they, when they, you know, sit down and start budgeting out these big scripts, you know, somebody okay. like Eddie Murphy is not auditioning. Somebody yeah, no. like, um, you know, Dave Chappelle is not auditioning. They're, they're, they're calling them in, you know, yeah. well, that, Tiffany that Haddish now, you know, they're calling her in. Right. Well, that was my point. That in that time, that day and time, that movie specifically, and that role that Dave Chappelle did, it wasn't a role that was uh, that was so ingrained in Hollywood that it that they knew the person could actually blow up. I just thought Dave Chappelle was so phenomenal in that role that it ended up being something that people looked back at and said, "Damn, that was Dave Chappelle. That was great." In our Right. right, he wasn't known. He wasn't known. Yeah, you know, he wasn't known. He wasn't known, but he was known inside Hollywood. Ah, okay. So, so there's a difference you know, there. And, 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 right, because but you have to realize that there's a a a, a pre social media and a post social media. Okay. So pre social, I mean that was pre social media. Yeah. So pre social media, people were hot in the industry, and they didn't have to necessarily be hot in public. 
Okay. But now post social media, they want you to be hot in public and that constitutes you being hot within the industry. You get gotcha. hot in social media and all this, and then you, you become hot in the industry. You, you become sought after in the industry. But at that time, there was no social media. Uh, they were looking to push Dave Chappelle out to the public. Ah, so so he was, yeah, I get it. That's sort of like, you know, how they was doing uh, Last Comic Standing. Because before, before um, the internet, they had certain people that they were pushing and they would get through the auditions and stuff like that on purpose. You know what I mean? So I, I get it. I think that that's kind of the correlation to that. So that's Good great. brother. I'm going to have to, uh, you know, uh, we, <laughs> it's Sunday. I have a, um, no, I don't want to, I, I didn't want to, you know, not do this, but we do a, we're doing virtual church and Lord yeah. knows I need to go to church where I'll mm -hmm. listen with him. So my no, wife I keeps appreciate you, man. I appreciate I have to, you. Uh, to, to go to the, uh, uh, uh the thing. So, uh, hit, hit me with a good uh, a, a, a good out question or what have you, and then uh, okay, I'll I gotta go to church. Listen, man, we noticed that I noticed that you were doing the bolts a lot, man. If you can give somebody some uh, advice on doing those, we can end this thing like that, bro. That works. Uh, you know, yes, I have been doing a lot of uh, cruises. Uh, cruises have become the new comedy clubs now because Carnival, uh, for example, has twenty eight ships. And each one of those ships have a has a comedy club on it, Royal yeah. Caribbean comedy. Yeah. So uh, the majority of the ships now are moving towards comedy. It's very self-contained. It's not you know, like a big production. One person in a mic is very economical for them. Exactly. So I've been doing the, yeah, the cruise ships, man. Um, now, uh, I, what was the question on the cruise ships? Just, uh, give, just uh, give us a little advice on, you know, on doing it if you love it. Um, you, you know, know how yeah, it affected I you, COVID was, and then we could, you know, I want you yeah, to go to man, church. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, thank you, bro. Thank you so much, brother. Uh, yeah, well, they shut it down, man. I, I was on one of the last ships when uh, all of this stuff broke out, or what have you. Thank God I made it off, man, because you're in a, a confined environment. So if one person has it, it's like being on an airplane, and one person has it, it's easy to spread to everybody else because you can't go anywhere. Yeah. So, uh, you know, uh, Praise God, I was able to get off. But I, I love doing the cruise ships, man. I've developed a, 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 a huge following from doing those cruise ships. So it's uh, it's great. The drawback is, is that I'm away from my family. I'm trying to move into things now uh, and create a way of staying at home more, man. I want to stay at home more and, uh, you know, and, 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 and be with my family. When my, my kids are at the age now where in a few years they'll be going off to college. They're both playing football. So I'm trying to stay home a little bit more, but I, I you know, I just love performing, man. I yeah. love performing whether it's on land, whether it's on, uh, or, or at sea or what have you. So everything's been great, man. You know, God is good, man. I want to encourage everybody, follow your dreams, man. Get out there, you know, uh, and make things happen. Don't wait for something to happen. Make it happen. Just like you're doing with this show, man. I think this is beautiful, man. You reached out to me. Anybody who's trying to do anything positive, man, I saw it. I made time for it today just so I could come on here and speak to you, man. So, you know, thank you for having me. Continue to do it. I want to encourage everybody to go to my website, DougWilliams.net, DougWilliams.net. That will show you, you know, link you to me, all of my social media or whatever. Support this good brother right here, man. And uh, it's been a pleasure being on here, good brother. Hey, thank you so much, man. And you have a great uh, night. And I hope to see you out here in Chicago or on the road somewhere doing this thing we do. You will, man, by the grace of God. Thank you, good brother. All right. Take care, bro. Peace.